Hello and welcome to yet another edition of Channels Beam's Google Hangout. Today we're talking about Nigeria at 53, but hey, today we're focusing on the youth and how they have been participating in governance and leadership or how they haven't. Today on the Hangout, I have different people. I have Adi Fora calling from UK, London, right? Good. Yep. And then I have Ifeolu Adebayo, who's calling from, I don't know where you're calling from. Nigeria. <laughs> oh, great, Nigeria. And then we we'll Lagos. Oh, from Lagos, that's great. We have Dayo Ebitoye. Dayo, where are you calling from? OK, I don't think Dayo can hear me. Dayo, if you can hear me, please give me a thumbs up. Can't hear me. So we're moving on. We also have um, Suleiman. Who's listening is listening in, but um, he will not be able to participate actively right now. We have Yoma Victor, who I believe is calling from Nigeria. I don't know where exactly. So we start off with Fora. Fora, Nigeria at 53. Of course, we're all happy, we're allowed to say, which is a good thing. But hey, we want more than just being alive to see Nigeria. We want to see a better Nigeria. And as Nigerian youth were saying, how can we participate in governance? How can we be more active? How can we make impact in Nigeria, especially in governance and when it comes to leadership? So I'll start off with you. Nigeria is 53. What can you say? So far, so good. In terms of youth participation, I would say probably Nigeria is quite similar to most countries. Um, Youth participation has been a dwindling issue both in the West and in the global South. Um, that's partly because young people find the democratic structures quite frustrating. Um, and activism has been one of the things that we've seen as a trend that has emerged with young people. So when you look at the Arab Spring or you look at some of the riots that happened in Europe, it is about young people who really care about issues but maybe aren't that interested in political structures. So in terms of kind of where Nigeria is at 53, I think you have to kind of set it within the context of the wider world. So where we are for a nation which has 70% 70, 70 of its population under 35 um, and a limited uh, percentage of those people in governance positions isn't great, but where we are in context of the wider world is something that we need to think about about how we engage young people in politics generally. Sorry, I can't hear you. OK, can you hear me now? Yes. OK, great. So I was saying that um, your what you just said, if I understand you correctly, is that Nigeria isn't so different from other countries in the world. I mean, what, what we're experiencing now isn't so different from what other people in other countries are experiencing. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that's what I'm saying. OK, great. So now I will move over to Lagos, Nigeria, where we have Ife Olua Adibayo. So Ife, Nigeria at 53, what can you say? Sorry, can you come again? Okay, so we're, we're talking about Nigeria at 53. But we're focusing on youth, on the, on the Nigerian youth, and we're talking about how well or not they've been involved in politics and governance. But I want to get a feel of what you think about Nigeria at 53. As a Nigerian youth, Nigeria at 53, what can you say? Um, well, I think I agree with Fora to a large extent that um, it's basically the same virtually everywhere in the world where you have the youth more interested in things that concern them like parties, social media, and things like that. So it's not exactly different in Nigeria. But in Nigeria, we need to realize that there are, we, our situation is very different from many other countries. And because of that, we cannot sit back and allow the status quo like it is everywhere else. We have to educate people. And this is because in many of these countries, the youth population actually have a lot of what they need, and many of them are actually educated. But in Nigeria, we have so many of the youth either, either not educated or semi-educated, because going to school does not necessarily mean you are educated. So you have many of these people ready to give up their vote for a thousand naira 
ready to give up their vote for as little as 500 naira on election day and not putting into consideration the long-term effects. So in my opinion, I believe we can do better by educating the youth more and making sure that they get more, not necessarily involved in everyday politics, but that on the days of that they are supposed to vote, on the days that they are supposed to voice out over certain things, that we can actually make sure that they know exactly what they are doing and that they are actually able to make wise and informed choices. Thank you. Okay, great contribution from you, Adebayo. Now, Adebayo and Fawaya have said something quite similar. You know, we're saying the youth are just shouting somehow. They're just going into activism. Now, Twitter has really helped in Nigeria. But it seems like when it comes to what really matters, voting, being informed, it's as if um, we're not really catching up. Does this mean that we're just all talk and no action? The same way we accuse our leaders of being all talk and no action. Uh, are we seeing choices in the Nigerian youth as well? For what do you think? I think, to be honest, that there is a real similarity between young people and the older people in Nigeria. And that's part of our problem as Nigeria. I think we all think, you know, there's this quick fix. It will be this one great minister. It will be this one great young person. And all of a sudden, Nigeria will be like a nirvana. Everything will be perfect. There is no country that gets fixed by, like, magic. It is hard work. It is slow. It is tedious. And it has to be consistent. So in terms of kind of young people, what I'm really interested in is some of the stuff that I do hear about kind of helping 15-year-olds to think about how they can improve their local area, helping 18-year-olds to think about how they might want to engage in local government, helping 25-year-olds to think about what they might want to do with local political parties to kind of engage in policy making, to engage in decisions that happen in their local area. It doesn't, young people won't get involved in governance just by deciding that because we're young, you have to put us on the table. They'll get involved because actually you're making a change. And I think that's the thing that we all kind of need to start thinking about is how do I, as a young activist, mobilize people on my street, mobilize people in my local area, mobilize people in my village, mobilize people in the town that I come from to actually make a difference. Great, thank you so much. Adibaya, how do you react to what I said? It's like we the youth are not too different from our fathers. We're all talk and very little action. What do you think? Well, I think every Nigerian, both young and old, I think we've 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 come through there's this generation that has lost a lot in terms of in terms of everything, in terms of education, in terms of in terms of government support, in terms of good governance. So we have a generation, a generation of youth that actually do not have anybody to look forward to. And then we have our fathers who are the ones who really suffered through the military regime and so they've been cowed into submission. So we 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 look up to them. They we, we grew up knowing them. We grew up knowing our fathers to give policemen twenty naira and just go past the checkpoint. So we grew up knowing our fathers having to queue up for, for fuel. So we 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 are not different from them because we don't know anything else. And as Fawara said, that's why we have to start from scratch again. We have to start educating everybody. Start from the young. There are a lot of things that the young people actually have to know. You know, an average five-year-old knows you can give a policeman 100 naira and he will allow you to go. So we need to change this perception. We need to start from the very young ones up until the youth and then up even until the older, older generation. So we are not any different from our fathers. If you take a look at the younger people in government, Many of the special advisors are young, many of the commissioners are young, but they are not doing anything different than the older generation, So, which, which means we're all the same at the end of the day. So I think we have to start a reorientation and you know, let everybody realize that you, know, you can start from your street, you can start from your neighbor, you can start from your village, you can start from your local, com um, from your local communities and start to make a change. Can I just jump in here? Sorry. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say, you know, a lot of people who are growing up in Nigeria now or who have grown up who are in their 20s or teens or 30s or whatever also had parents who didn't give the policeman 20 naira, also had parents who queued for things. You know, I remember my father, like when Nitel came and said that they wanted a bribe for a line, we didn't have a phone for seven years. 
because it was like that is not my job I refuse to be part of this and I think it is those individual actions that are the things that will get us back to where we need to get to so it's about each of us individually making a decision that actually I'm not going to bribe the police officer I'm not going to drive down a one-way road and I'm not going to just think mm, for 150 naira 200 naira I can just move on I'm actually going to go through this process and it's going to be inconvenient to me but for the sake of a better Nigeria I'm gonna stick through that great thank you so much interesting conversation and um, one more thing that I'd like to chip in into that is now we're saying we are the generation of people who who haven't really enjoyed the, the best of Nigeria. We have people who are parents who come and tell us, oh, once upon a time, Nigeria used to have light, it was 24 7. And then some people will come, oh, education was perfect, I could travel from here to wherever, and you know, I'd, I'd be sure that there, there, there's probably not even one pothole on the road. You know, we hear stories like that. And it seems like we just were just dropped into Nigeria when it was at uh, its worst, you know. So it's like we know something is wrong. But I'm thinking, do we know how to fix the situation? We know, okay, this is wrong. Oh, we know that, okay, fuel subsidy, they came, and we felt like, okay, we, we're making enough money. There's no reason to take this away, in a sense. We know that, okay, it shouldn't be there in the first place. Lots of people are doing lots of shady things via that. We know it shouldn't be there, but we're thinking, hey, we're making enough money, and this thing should be cheap. If you increase the price, you're making us suffer when we shouldn't. So, you know, we all went out on the streets, we felt like, oh, this is wrong, and we were doing something about it. But in a larger sense of it, we know that lots of things are wrong in the country. And we were just dropped into it. So we didn't even follow the process of how it started, if I may say so. Now, the question is, do we have people, because we really can't do it alone, because we were just dropped into, into the middle of it. You can't, um, you can't try to moderate a conversation you started halfway into it, if you understand what I'm saying. You needed to have started from the beginning, you understand the foundation of it, and so you're able to suggest, you're able to do all sorts. Now, for the generation of, of, of Nigerian youth who are dropped into the middle of the problem, we don't know, we don't really understand the genesis. We weren't there when we had 247 lights, we weren't there when we had good roads and good leaders, we weren't there when Nigerians were orderly and less corrupt. Do we have people in the society that we look at and say, yes, although these guys are bad, I see this guy, who seems like he's going the right way, who seems like, okay, I should follow his lead. Because we have many youth saying Nigerian leaders are this and that, they aren't, they aren't giving us a good example to follow. But on the, on, on the flip side, do you see people in, in the Nigerian society who we can look up to? Baya, I'll start with you. Hello, Baya, can you hear me? Okay, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so did you get what I was saying? I'm saying, do you see people? Yes, I, 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 yes, oh, I did that to you. Go ahead. Okay, so um, I'm one of those that believe that you, it is, it is only in very rare cases that you get a mass of people making a change. Most times, you have only a few people actually making a change. So, do we have people that we can look up to currently? Yes, I do, I, do, I do believe that there are people that we can look up to. There are a few government officials here and there that are doing good things. We've had people who have held government positions and they've done well. Probably not, they've, not been, they've not been perfect, but they've done really good. We had Malam El Rufai in, um, um, in the FCT. We had Nuri Badu in the FCC. We had Durak Mili in Afdak. So, I mean, there are people, but we have to find those people. And finding those people actually starts with putting, finding, having a leader that can pick out successful people and put them in particular positions to be able to carry out things. So I do believe there are people like that in the Nigerian society. We just have to find them wherever they are and, and pick them. You know, like, like Fora mentioned, that her father refused to pay, you know, for bribes and all. There are people like that also. There are people like our father in our generation who will actually refuse to do certain things because they believe it is not right. And people like that, if you put them in certain positions, they are going to do really well. Great, thank you so much. Now, Fora, I'll ask you, um, how come we don't see these people by us talked about? How come they, they aren't prominent people? How come they're not like so larger than life that everybody can say, oh my God, we don't really need to focus on bad guys. 
because we see the good guys here as larger as life as the bad guys. So if you get what I'm saying, how come these good guys aren't so obvious to the Nigerian society and the Nigerian youth? I guess it depends on who, what you're looking for. So if you're looking for some perfect national politician um, in a kind of El Rafai um, uh, guise, I'm not going to kind of comment about how good or bad he is um, here. But if you're looking for that, it's very difficult to find. It's difficult to find that in the US. It's difficult to find that in the UK. It's difficult to find that in Italy. Those people that swim to the top of national politics aren't angels. They are people that come up in the rough and tumble of politics and they are characters that have flaws and strengths. I think actually what is interesting to me is that how many Nigerians are noticing people in MDAs who are doing their jobs, who get their files to you and don't ask you for anything. You know, the police officer that actually does his job properly, they, they exist. They're not a many of they're not a lot of them, but they exist. And do you, when you see that, think actually, what can I do to kind of make sure that I don't encourage other police officers to kind of think that this is rubbish? So when you see a teacher who is you know, going all heart out to make sure that their students are learning and to turn up to school regularly, irrespective of what is going on in terms of kind of the school space. Do we value that teacher or do we go, hmm, you mumu, you're just sitting there, they're just treating you like an idiot. So that's where the value comes. And I think that's the thing that we all need to ask ourselves. When I see those people doing small things on a daily basis, sweeping the roads, staying there underneath the sun, doing everything for 10,000 naira, 12,000 naira, do I value that human being enough to say, actually, they should be earning minimum wage and actually writing to Lagos State to say, this is something and I want this person to be valued because I think this is an evidence of hard work? Or do I go, sure, let me just move on with my life. I want oil and gas. It's the thing that you value that you then see in your kind of national life. And I think the thing that we value is big personalities, is people who show that Nigerian thing that we have gone into of kind of demoing all kinds of funkiness and razness and whatever. And that's what we get in politics. So we can't blame anybody else for that except ourselves. We are basically reflecting back to ourselves in our leaders the things that we value. Great. Thank you so much. Now, I'm going to ask... Well, I'd like okay. to just chip in there. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I also like to chip in that you discover that people like this, most of the time, do not want to get involved. Most of the time, they do not want to be, they, they believe they, they, there's a rot in the system, so they exclude themselves from the system. And they sort of build their own perfect enclave, you know, within their own little environment, within their own little office. And so most of the time, you don't get them actually coming out there. Okay, great. Now, I, I, I'm about to change my question. Uh, you just inspired a question in me. Now, I heard a comment once that you can, you don't fix the system while in it. You fix it while you're outside of it. How does that make any sense? How do we, is it possible to fix the situation well when you're outside of it? Or do you get into it and fix it from the inside? Because you just mentioned something via that lots of good people, quote unquote, don't want to get into the system because they feel this is too dirty, and and which is true. Lots of good people have been discouraged because they feel politics is dirty, especially in Nigeria, and they feel you know what I don't want to be a part of it. But the question is, can we fix this outside of it? Or I think you know there's two ways to fix the system. I think there's definitely people that have to be in the system to fix it, but I think actually there's a real value for people who stay outside the system. So I'll give you an example. I know that the way that I am structured, I am not very good as a politician. That's just the truth. I am too direct. I have, you know, really clear kind of opinions. And so politics is not for me. But actually, policy and advocacy is for me because I'm really good at thinking through problems and coming up with solutions. So my contribution to the system from the outside, if you want to call it that, because I'm not a pure politician, is that I sit down with politicians here and I talk to them about the decisions that they're making, the impact of those decisions, and how they might choose different policy options to get to where they want to get to. That's my contribution from the outside in. But I have friends who are counsellors, who are standing as MPs, who are current MPs in the UK now, 
who actually have made a decision that actually it works for them to get into the system. And they are, you know, I have a friend who is a Labour MP but has been funded separately and works really hard to do some really important work. And she's made it really clear that actually she can change the system from the inside. And she has made a massive difference. So I think it's not an either or question. It's both have to work for us to have a different kind of political system. Thank you so much for Maya, what do you say? Um, I think we need champions in every sector. We need champions in politics, we need champions in the health sector, we need champions in the education sector. And in all of these, there has to be change from the inside. So I don't believe you can be outside the system and make a change inside. But if you want to change in politics, you can make the change. The best way to make the change is by making the change from the inside. We have various policy documents sitting with the federal government now that have not been implemented. That is because the people who put together these policy documents made these recommendations outside the government. But you see, you can only make a recommendation to the government. You cannot make them to actually implement these recommendations unless you are on the inside. So I am of the belief that we need champions in every sector, and these champions actually have to bring this change from the inside most of the time. Great. Thank you. Now, I'm going to ask another question. The Nigerian youth were passionate, were strong, you know, were agile, and were concerned. We see that lots of things have gone wrong. But the question is, are we ready? Are we prepared? For instance, lots of people have said, oh, the elderly ones, the old leaders, the ones who have been ruling for 20 years and not years, they don't want to leave, perhaps. But if we were given the opportunity today, right now, do you think that Nigerian youth is ready for leadership and for governance. Do you want me to answer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, I think for the Nigerian young people who want to be leaders tomorrow, I think I have a couple of things that they should think about. You know, currently our illiteracy rate is about 48%. So, you know, we are you're dealing with a nation of people who basically can't read and write. Yeah, that's like what you're inheriting from these elderly people that you want to take over from. And you're talking about, you know, a population that has about 5% roughly who are graduates. There isn't a mass of kind of intellectual capacity within the Nigerian kind of population. So while you think about kind of taking over, you need to think about how do I engage with people who are not like me? Because very often the Nigerian young people that we're talking about who are looking for governance are people like me or like Ife who have gone to school, who have graduated, who have good degrees, who are really smart. We are not the poor 17th child of the fifth wife of someone's malam. We're not that person. And how do you engage with the reality of that person's life to make sure that when you're leading, what you're doing is not just creating a bubble for yourself and your friends who fly and go to Dubai and do everything else, but you're actually meeting the need of people who are terrified of getting vaccinations, who don't understand that like when lightning comes down on a tree, the tree will catch fire and that's normal. How do you kind of make a connection with those people to make sure that you can lead? And so for me, for any Nigerian young person who is thinking about that, you have to invest a lot of time in kind of grassroots understanding of the Nigeria that you want to lead. Because Nigeria is not Lagos, circle, Potakot, circle, or whatever it is. The Nigeria that you're going to govern is little villages outside, you know, Ikene, outside, you know, like tiny places where people are packed in and have no idea about Twitter or Google Hangouts or whatever. So, like, what are you going to do to engage with those people? Great. I totally love your contribution for... Adibayo, what do you think? Hello, Bayo. I think the Nigerian youth. Go yes, ahead. can you hear me? Go ahead. Can you hear me? Okay. I think the Nigerian youth are ready, actually, to take the mantle of leadership. But, like we said earlier, are they going to be any different than the older generation? So, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're looking for people who... Nigerian youth who can hold positions in governments, Nigerian youth who can hold positions in MDAs, Nigerian youth who can lead certain implementation policies and programs, I'm sure we can find them. 
Well, like I also said earlier, we have to actually find them. There are a lot of these people doing wonderful things in big corporations. A lot of Nigerians doing wonderful things in corporations like Microsoft. A lot of Nigerians doing wonderful things in airports in England. So if we want people who can make changes in our airports, we bring we bring them in. A lot of people, Nigerians doing wonderful things in pharmaceutical industries in America. Where are they? We have to find them. So I do believe that we have people who can actually make this change, but we actually have to find them, and I believe they're actually ready. But where are they? We have to look for them and we have to find them. And for those of them who might be listening to me, come back home. If you're already home, go back to your local community. Start making a change. Start being the change that you want to be. Less of Twitter, less of Facebook, and more of actually being on the ground and being the change that you want to be, that you want to see. Well, that's interesting. Less of Twitter, less of Facebook, and get into the local business. Question is, how many... Now, Fora, you mentioned something. You said the Nigeria we are looking to govern is not in Lagos. That Nigeria is not in Abuja. That, that Nigeria is not the ones who... It, it's not made of Nigerians who travel to Dubai every now and then. These people are the ones in the small villages. That is what you said for her. Now, Bayo, you said something about we should look for people who are ready. You believe that people are ready, and you believe that we need to find them. Now, do you, yes. mean, do you mean that you're not seeing them right now? I mean, people around you, people that you've been seeing probably uh, on Twitter, maybe, on, on Facebook, the average Nigerian, you don't see that person, that savior, in them. Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying is there are a lot of them who are actually ready, who have this in them, but who are more interested in other things, who are more focused in other things. Some of them are more focused on their jobs. Some of them are more focused on social media. But you see, some of them, many of these people that you see, like for example, all the youth on Twitter, if you do a survey and you ask them where are they from, you discover some of them are from these villages in Okene, some of them are from these villages in, in, in Kefi, in Contangora, you know, but they've totally alienated themselves from these communities. So we all need to start making these changes from the people that actually need to hear the message, people that actually need to be governed. We need to go back to our local communities. I'm a very, very strong advocate of going back to your local communities. We need to go back. It doesn't have to even be where you're from. It can be where you grew up. It can be where you live currently. But you see, where you live currently with your AC and your generator, you might be surprised, just one kilometer down the road, there's a shanty there where there are children who have never even been to school. We need to start making the change from our local community. So I'm not saying the, the youth on social media are not ready, or the youth I see around are not ready. They are ready, but they just need to channel their consciousness towards actually being the change that they want to see. Well, great. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Now, another question I have, the Nigerian youth. Thank you. You believe we're ready, right? Yeah. Do you believe we're ready? As ready as they're going to be. <laughs> Great. Now, Bayo already, already said he believes we are ready. Now, the question is, how do we start this process? Bayo mentioned something. You go to your local community. You start up something. But how do we really, I mean, you can start, I can start up something in my little area, my community, you know, Find maybe one or two kid, little kids who need to go to school, ensure that they do that. You know, I can start that. But how does that fit into the big? We're talking. I mean, we're, we're talking Nigeria. We're just talking about people who are doing small things in the, the small places. Um, this this issue is as big as you being in an influential position. Okay, the change. I can make if I were to be a minister is definitely going to be different from the change I would be making in my little community. Um, do you understand me? So, right. question is, what we as, as much as we want to start at the uh, at the lower levels, we want to start in our community, we want to start in our area, our villages. How do we start to key into the bigger picture? That is, getting into the thick of it. How do I think of influencing major decisions in this country. How do I, okay, let me start thinking. How do I become the, the next Minister of Information? How do I, be, not for, you know, your own aggrandizement or anything, but to make change. That is what we're focusing on. 
how will the Nigerian youth? Because it's the same. We don't even know how to go forward. Now I, I'm here. I'm thinking of how I'm going to uh, produce this program, produce that program, do this, and, and it's like 24/7. I'm on the job. But I'm also passionate about about my country, and I can imagine so many Nigerian youth, the ones in the capital working. Uh, two four seven. Those working in the bank, they're so busy, but they're passionate about this country. Question is, how do these people, these ones that are passionate but somewhat busy, how do they fit into the bigger picture? How do they even begin the process of getting into the system to make a change? I guess, I guess that's, that's where like politics is really interesting. There's um, the limited. You, you have a very small engagement process where you can say, actually, I'm really busy. But all I have is enough time to research the people that I am electing into local government, into national assembly, state assembly, um, and in, into the presidency to make sure that actually I've made the right choice based on actually not just going, mm, I've got two minutes, I'll just work it out, but giving it half an hour, an hour, whatever, because I'm so busy I don't have time. Do you know what I mean? And that's one thing. And then from there on, there are levels of kind of engagement that you can get into, whether it is supporting an NGO that is doing work in an area, whether it's about you doing a piece of work yourself, whether it's about how you, where you invest your money in Nigeria, what you put your money into that you earn out of your salary and where you think that is going to yield value, whether it's the choices that you make about what you buy, whether it's the choices that you make about who you support. Now, those are all different choices that you can make that can have an impact on Nigeria. But if you, as a person, are looking at your life and you're saying, from here, where I am in my job, I want to go into politics, I want to become a politician, I want to become a national politician, I kind of think the, the model of Obama is, to me, one of the best models. That is somebody that kind of went into, and he learned at the grassroots, he went into Chicago, he did a lot of kind of citizen kind of engagement stuff in Chicago and that's where he built his career from. He built it from the bottom and every step he took led him to the White House. If that's what you want to do, I would say that is the model to follow. And it's not a slow model, but it's a model that teaches you about people. It teaches you also about politics, about the process of politics, because that's a real skill. I think a lot of Nigerian people, not just young people, who go into politics have a real lack of understanding of what politics is. So they treat it as this kind of game, they treat it as this kind of bullying situation. But there is an art to politics and there is a way of kind of convincing people to do things that you learn by actually going up against people day in, day out. I am a better policy person now than I was five years ago, but that's because I have had to negotiate with people. I have had to learn how to negotiate with people and I've had to learn how to um, use my influence to a greater ability. So I know that that is a process that I have gone through and I know that I am able to apply that in different situations. So I've used that in the UK, I've used it in Albania, I've used it in the US. So for me, that is about opportunities to kind of grow and taking every step and going that this is where my end goal is and making sure that I am taking every step in a very decided way. Thank you so much for... Now we have a... We have Ola Shek and Dada back on the Hangout. Can you hear us now, Shek? Hello, Shek, can you hear us? Victor, can you hear us? Okay. I'm getting audio from that. Dada, can you hear us? Okay, we can't hear you. Can you hear us? Well, we'll come back to him. We also have um, Victor. Victor, can you hear us? Okay, can't hear Victor as well. Anyways, Bio, I want your contribution to what I just mentioned. How will the average uh, Nigerian youth working, probably even in the city, interested in Nigeria and interested in governance leadership, how do you get out of that 247 routine to actually participate in governance and leadership in Nigeria? You know, I was going to talk about Obama, actually, <laughs> but Fora beat me to it. <laughs> Is everybody's role model? <laughs> yeah, because um, he 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 basically went back to the grassroots, just like I was, just like I've been saying. He went to his local community and he built himself from there. And 
I'm from Ekwe in Lagos State. I've been going to my local community of recent since I returned to Nigeria from England. And one thing I've learned, because um, I have about two or three other friends who have come to me to say, look, we want to get involved. We don't know how. And I told them, go back to your local community. I have a friend from Ogun State who went back to his local community just two weeks ago for the first time in about 12 years. And within two days, he was able to meet Ruben Abati. He was able to meet one of the PS12 passengers. And why is this? This is because there is a dirt in quality of people in politics in the local communities. My first visit to the um, sort of local head for my community, the first thing he told me, he said, oh, they've been telling us to bring names for commissioners. We don't have people that we can put forward. We want more people like you to come home. There's actually a dirt. There's actually the, the, the number of, quali of, of quality youth who are actually going back home, who are actually home doing things, is actually very, very few. So we need more people to go back home. So if you go back home and you do your bit, you'll be surprised at how fast people will get to know you. You'll be surprised at how fast people will be ready to actually put you out there and be like, yes, I can vote for him. Because they are used to having the money sharing, the thuggery, the you know, lack of thinking, lack of policies and all. So when you come forward and you put forward a policy and you put forward an idea, you'll discover that people are ready to embrace it. Because the Nigeria of today, is moving away from the politics of money sharing because people are beginning to realize it doesn't work for them. So if they find someone who can bring something out that can work, they are very likely going to embrace you. They might sideline you when they want to do their brouhaha, but when they're looking for something that will work, they will look for you wherever you are. But that's when you have actually made yourself available, when they know where to find you. So I believe the easiest way is to start from scratch. Go back to your local community and get involved. Can I just jump in? Sorry. Please go ahead. I was going to say, I think one of the really interesting things for me, and I totally agree with Ife about the fact that, you know, you have to go back to your local area. Um, whether you're physically in Nigeria or you're not in Nigeria and you want to make a change, I think actually it is, you know, it is something that actually people should do as a requirement. But I think one of the things that's been really interesting for me as I've kind of like looked at opportunities for doing stuff in my where I kind of my parents came from um, and I'm doing projects there now is how much that is our history. So Nigerians, young Nigerians, if you actually want to be really honest with yourself, if you look at the way our tribes and our kind of cultures emerged, they emerge with people doing grassroots activities and those people then becoming leaders. That is the essence of chiefs in most kind of communities from the east to the west to the north. That's the way that they function. It is the people that turn up and have ideas and want to kind of vest their energy in making their areas better that kind of get promoted. So that is in our DNA and it's not some kind of alien thing to us. And I think if, you know, as young people, if we want to sort of change the nation, we need to remember that that's who we are as Nigerians and actually follow that path because that is the path that our ancestors, if you want to be very kind of romantic about it, that is the path that they led, and that path works for the people of Nigeria. Okay, thank you so much for now. Two things before we go, two things actually. Now, I saw a tweet one time, and which I actually agreed with. Now, we're talking about uh, voting which is key, you know, in as much as we know who we want to vote for, you may not know who your neighbor wants to vote for. So it got me thinking. We have so many um, uneducated people on the streets. Take Lagos, for example. If you can find the number of people living in Islam, then I'm sure that number is, 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 is significant enough to ensure that someone uh, gets a particular position when it comes to elections. What am I talking about? Now, we the educated ones, we say, oh, let's go out, let's vote, let's do this, let's know who we're voting for. But the question is, lots of people say votes don't count. Why? Because lots of these politicians will go into the streets, get the area boys, and get them to vote with uh, after giving them 1,000 naira, a bag of rice, half bag of rice. And it's done, you know. So the question is, we are enlightening ourselves. It, it, it seems like we're just doing it in our own circle. You know, everybody on this hand is most definitely educated, probably educated abroad or in the best schools in the country. 
but it seems like we're just having this discussion among uh, within a, a certain circle. Question is, have we reached out to people outside our circle, the uneducated ones, the algorithm boy, the downfall driver, the downfall conductor, the Okada rider, who is also going to vote? Probably is going to be influenced by whatever amount of money is being given. Now, how are we also reaching out to these people to say, hey, we're concerned about Nigeria, we're concerned about where this country is going to, but we need you to be a part of it. Are we, are we actually doing that? Are we reaching out to these people? Maya, what do you think? Well, um, I'd, I think if you compare the last election to the election of 1999, I think there has been an improvement. And I don't think it's going to happen overnight. I think the improvement is going to be gradual. But I also think we need to scale it up. We need to move it faster. Um, I tell people that, look, our votes are actually minor. Our votes are negligible, really. The votes that really count are the votes of these masses, these damn food drivers, these area boys, these you know, market women. It's their votes that actually count. And they are the ones who come and collect 500 naira on the day of election. I was speaking to my ward councillor in Ekwe, and I said, um, how do we how do we get people to vote to vote right? How do we get people to actually understand the issues and vote right? And he said, "Well, we can get them to vote right, but we have to give them money." And I said, "Okay, can't we? We don't have the money to give them. So can we tell them, okay, don't collect this money?" He said, "No, but they need the money." I said, "Okay, but can they not collect the money and vote their conscience?" He said, "That might be possible, but you see, we need groups like." the, the um, Enough is Enough Nigeria, who are actually going to the communities and actually doing talk shows and actually, you know, sensitizing the people. We need more groups like that. We need groups like that in actually in every local community so that people are educated, so that they know that the 1,000 naira you're giving on election day is going to finish that day where you need to vote in people who will not give you fish but who will teach you how to fish. It's, it's, a, it's a hard task. I don't know when we're going to get to that stage. I don't know when we're going to get to that level. But we just have to keep trying. We just have to keep working. Everybody in your local your community, in your little way, talk to your driver, talk to your cook, talk to the woman who sells you pepper in the market. Educate these people. You'll be surprised how much can be done if we all just start to make that little effort. Thank you very much. Um, I think my thing is that, you know, with the levels of poverty in Nigeria, it's always going to be difficult because actually people's basic need, those you know, down for drivers, those area boys, they need to eat, you know, at the end of the day. However nice and fancy we all want to sound about, teach me how to fish and don't just give me fish. I just need to eat. So I don't really care if I learn how to fish or you give me fish. I just need to eat. So it's going to be very difficult um, to kind of turn that around. I'm not saying it's impossible. I think if I is right that, you know, it's a slow process. It's better than it used to be. People seem more interested now than they used to be. I think a part of it, it's like a multifaceted thing. I think the more that we know about people who aren't like us, the more that we care about what they're thinking. So it would be really interesting to me that if we started seeing documentaries about the lives of those people that aren't us, those people that you know are struggling outside our circle, what it means for them, for us to start thinking about actually how we frame our conversations back to them so that they feel invested in the political system because the political system works for us. We all sit here and talk about ASU and talk about, you know, fuel subsidy and they are not even there. That is beyond their base. They're not even thinking about primary school. Let's be really honest. They're just thinking about what am I going to eat today? How are we going to get through tomorrow? Do you understand? People aren't thinking about oh, like running water or anything like that. They are thinking about the basic necessities of life. How will I not get moved on from the shanty town or the slum that I live in? How will my child not die from polio because I don't know that polio is an actual disease? Those are the very fundamental things. So we need to think about actually what are the interventions that we're doing that are tr encouraging people to trust us? I read this really lovely story about my grandfather a couple of years ago, and he did some work in um, in Ogun State, where where we're from. And what he was saying was actually, you know, when you help people to get jobs, you can have conversations with them about other things. So those of us that don't want to go into politics, that are working in businesses, I think it's behooves on us to like think about how do we grow those businesses to kind of get people jobs? Because like once people start satisfying some of those basic needs, we can start addressing 
the wider conversation about the type of politics that we need in Nigeria, the type of framework we need to grow the country. Because those are complex questions. It's not just build roads and let's have a train, because it's not that simple. We really need to think about the kind of economy we want for the next 50 to 100 years, where our place is in Africa, what our role is. And that's not a question that you're going to have with somebody who hasn't eaten for four days. It, however nicely you frame that, however much you give them, which is why the 1,000 Naira will always be very attractive. Fantastic. Now, um, on a final note, try balance them. Now this is a big issue. Every a lot of people have said that this um, has torn this country, you know, into pieces. Because we were, were thinking, oh, I'm a Hausa, I'm Igbo, oh, I'm from South South, I'm Nigerian, I'm this and that. And it seems like a uh, lot of people have said our leaders encouraged this thing. Lots of people have said, oh, our leaders didn't really do it right, you know. You hear someone say, oh, he's Igbo, I cannot, I can't stand him, or oh, he's this, I can't stand him. And it seems like our leaders helped this. You know, lots of people have accused our leaders. My question is, do you think this will be an issue for this generation? Because like it or not, in a couple of years' time, in what, 10 years' time, 20 years' time, we're going to have people in this generation become uh, governors and all that, presidents. Do you see that issue in this generation? Because if we don't um, tackle it, it will just end up in that cycle. Question. Do you see if you, that in, in, if in the, read, um, the comments on punch stories, you will know that that is an issue for this generation. It doesn't take much before it descends into just ethnic slurs and the worst kind of abuses based on people's um, where people come from within the country. And so, for us, I don't think we can pretend that this generation hasn't taken on that legacy of um, Yoruba or Ami Jabuan, you are Ikiti, or you know, I'm from the South South and you're Hausa or whatever. That is still very much a real part of the Nigerian problem. And for me, one of my concerns is our model for the last 20 years has been let's just divide everything so that everybody has somebody at the table. So when somebody complains and says, Ah, but Ijo people are sidelined. Okay, let's put Ijo person inside. And then Ijebu people come up and say, Ah, but Ijebu people, okay, let's put somebody inside. And then young people get up and say, Ah, but young people say, let's put young people inside. And that model of just encouraging us to see ourselves as different as opposed to as Nigerians. So, like, we don't look for a Nigerian that has the interest of Nigeria at heart. We look for a Yoruba politician that will hook up all the Yoruba people, and the Ijo politician that will hook up, you know, the Ijo nation. And we just keep on going in this kind of crazy cycle of encouraging us to see each other not as part of one nation, but as kind of factions, you know, in this kind of weird war where we have a very strange truce, where it doesn't take much, you know, it takes somebody to shove you, say, mm -hmm. it's Kuku Ibo people, that's how they'll be shoving people anyhow. I mean, that level of tension is just bubbling under all the time. And I think we can't grow a nation from that perspective. You. We, I think we just lost bio. I can't find oh. it in anymore. But anyways, I mean, is it back? Oh, it's back. <laughs> bio, are you with us? Hello, bio. Hello. Hello. Okay, great. Yeah, I lost you. You'll have to repeat the last question, sorry. Okay, so I haven't even Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So I'm going to yeah, I lost you. Can you hear me? Hello, Bayo, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, great. So the question is how I can hear you. Now. Okay, great. The qu my question is how do we start to solve this problem called tribalism? How do we start to wash our brains anew? How do we start to mend the tear that tribalism has caused? Do you, do you see that happening? Do you see the Nigerian youth of today saying, you know what, I don't care where it's from, I just want the work done? You can go ahead. Um. Um, I wish I heard what for I had to say about that, <laughs> but I'll just I'll just go ahead. Um, 
personally, I believe the easiest way to deal with this tribalism problem is by first admitting that we have a problem. You see, we many Nigerians don't admit we have a problem. We think it can go away, but it cannot. So we have to first and foremost admit that we have this problem, and then we have to agree and talk about what our differences are, and then start to live with those differences. We cannot shy away from our differences. We cannot assume these differences don't exist. We have these differences, and we have to learn to live with them. I think that is the solution to this problem. Everybody come together. These are my differences. This is what I want as a Yoruba person. These are my values. This is my culture as a Hausa person, as an Igala man, as a Tiv person. You know, we need to understand our differences, and we need to learn to live with them. That is the reason why you see that in spite of all the ethnic issues we have, a Yoruba man will be married to an Igbo woman, and they will have a very blissful marriage. That is not because they don't have differences. It's because the both of them realize that they have differences, and they've agreed to live with those differences. They don't live like those differences do not exist. So I think the first stage of solving the ethnic problem is by actually admitting that we have our differences, coming up with ways in which we can live with our differences, in which everybody will be happy. Great, thank you so much. Now, a final, final question. What, um, now the president has finally set up a committee to look into the national conference, which lots of people have been clamoring for for a couple of you know, years. Now, the question can, is, can you come again, please? OK, so I said the president, President Goodluck Jonathan, has finally uh, come up with a committee to look into setting up a national conference. Did you get that? Hello? Yeah, I got that. So now that, that sounds like well, I'm I'm a I'm a, big, I'm a big supporter of the of the, of 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 a national conference. Okay, but great. I am a supporter of a sovereign national conference, not a national okay. conference for the sake of national conference. We need to have a sovereign national conference, a national conference that after the conference, the decisions are binding. Now, a lot of people argue that we currently have the national assembly, and they can actually you know push forward whatever it is that can be decided at the National Conference. But we have to realize that the current National Assembly is a beneficiary of the status quo. And we cannot expect them to go to the table with our demands or with, 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 our, with our interest at heart. Their interest is going to come first because that's what they've been known to do. So we need a National Conference that will have people who are not there for money, people who will not be paid for being there. Their presence might be paid for, the accommodation and feeding might be paid for, but you're not going to receive a penny for every day you spend at the national conference. So you are going there, not out of a selfish interest, but because you have a reason to be there, because you want to actually push for the demands of your people, for the demands of your constituency. Not people that will pay sitting allowance, and who will go there and end up you know, pushing for things that have to do with their own um, um, goals and aspirations. So I'm, the, I'm a firm believer of a sovereign national conference. I believe we, Nigeria needs one, because I believe we what we currently have was foisted on us. It was not a decision by Nigerians. It was not a plan by Nigerians. It was not a document put together by Nigerians. So we need a sovereign national conference, and we need to have a talk about our existence and about how we want to move forward as a nation. Thank you. Sorry, I can't hear you. How do you respond to this? How do you respond to it? Um, I have a real, how do I put this? I don't really see the value of the national conference. I'll be really honest with you, or the sovereign national conference. I'll be very honest about that as well. I think it is really interesting to me that this tiny population in Nigeria has decided that it is that they will represent the voice of the majority of Nigerians to have a conversation about the kind of Nigeria those other Nigerians want to live. So as we have this national conference, it will be full of educated, articulate, um, professional people. It won't be mama whatever from somewhere in the back of beyond because she can't get to the national conference. And to be honest, when she gets there, she doesn't really care. Her, her child is sick. Her husband died. They're fighting over family land. Her farm is not producing cassava at the level that it needs to. The least things that she needs to think about right now is a national conference or a sovereign national conference. That's my honest opinion. I think there's a conversation about whether people want to have another review of the Constitution. 
my argument about this, and this is really from a legal perspective, is that I think that actually constitutional law in Nigeria has not developed in a robust way, and that is the healthy way to deal with the Constitution. That actually as people bring up cases and test sections of the Constitution, we can interpret it in a way that works for us. But if, in the Nigerian way, we want to go the hard way of solving quite a straightforward problem, let's scrap the Constitution, let's have a really long conversation about what should go into the Constitution, spend at least, it should take us at least three or four years to pull that together. And in the meantime, I don't really know what we're trying to achieve, given the fact that we have 10.5 million children out of school, we have 5,000 children dying on a daily basis from like minor diseases like diarrhea. Like, I'm just wondering, priorities, how we're weighing this up. Is this the most important thing going forward? For me, no. But I don't think like that means it's a, you know, like it shouldn't, you know, if people then decide that this is what they want to do, that's what democracy is about. And I'll just be voted out as a minority. But my minority vote is, I just don't think it's a very good idea. Sorry. All right, thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Flora, and thank you, Bario, for joining this hangout. On a final note, what would you like to tell the Nigerian youth? If you had, you know, one big platform to tell the Nigerian youth, one thing, what would it be, Bario? Um, I'd like to tell the Nigerian youth that Nigeria is our responsibility, each and every one of us. So when you wake up in the morning and you drive to the office and you give that little beggar 50 naira to clean your windshield, remember that he is not just a government responsibility, he is your responsibility. He's cleaning your windshield today at 13 years old. In seven years' time, at 20 years old, he might be with a gun on the road waiting for you. So he is your responsibility. You have to ask the questions. Why is he not in school? Why is he here cleaning your windshield? So Nigeria is our responsibility, and we all have to go back to the basics, go back to our local communities and start asking all these questions, start ensuring that we put our children in school, ensuring that we ask the questions of our local government ward councillors, our local government chairman, start contributing our own little quota in our own little way, pick a child, sponsor him to school. It might not cost you more than 20,000 naira per term. Might not cost you more than fifty thousand euro per term. The amount of money you spend on a bottle of Hennessy in the club. So pick a child, be that child responsibility, and contribute your own quota to the development of Nigeria. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Bio. Flora. I think it's quite similar to what Ife said. That you know, the the truth is, I think. My one thing for Nigerian young people is that there is no magic cure for Nigeria. There's no day that we're going to wake up and there's going to be light. There's no day we're going to wake up and all the roads will be working or all the roads will be perfect. There are steps that will get us there, and those steps are long, and they require all of us to be consistent. So if you take your little spots, your the front of your house, and you don't litter it and you keep it clean. It encourages your neighbor to do the same. It encourages the rest of the street to do the same. And that's how Nigeria will change. So that 50 naira that you give the police officer just because, you know, I drove down the road, but, you know, how for? Think about it, because that's how we change Nigeria. It's that simple act of saying, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. And we're going to do this differently that will create a different Nigeria for all of us. Thank you so much, Bora. Um, Suleiman, you were away for most of the conversation. So I just want you to give us a, a final word, so to speak. If you had to tell the Nigerian youth one thing, what would it be? OK. Come on, Brian. So Suleiman, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, great. So my mom is on daddy duty. My, yeah, my child is good. <laughs> okay, so um, on the final note, this uh, we're wrapping it up. If you had to tell the Nigerian youth one thing, you know, if you had the platform to tell every Nigerian youth one thing, what would it be? Well, the only thing I would say to Nigerian youth is um, to be hardworking, commitment, uh, committed, and be truth. To ourselves. The reason I said this is, you know, you're going to be extremely surprised when you find Nigerian youth, the way we are working hard here, I mean, and the way we are contributing meaningfully to the development of most of these developed parts of the world where we live in, you know. Unfortunately, when it comes down to Nigeria, you know, we still collaborate, you know, and be part of the system that destroys our development or impede our development. But 
Um, Up here, I mean, Nigerian youth, most of our youth, anyway, work differently, you know. So that's just my point that I would want to make, you know. All right, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Adi, for our award. You're calling from London. Where in London? I uh, can't hear you. Brooklyn, South London. Pardon? South London. Oh, that one, great. I'm really sorry. I, I want to continue. You had a nice discussion, but I'm a, I'm on a duty, you know. Way more important. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Ifeolua Adebayo. is coming from it's Lagos. Where in Lagos? Bayo, where are you coming from? Where in Lagos are you calling from? Sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, okay, hold on a second, please. From Aja. Oh, from Aja in Lagos. And Suleiman, why? Oh, we should know, but for the sake of everyone else, where are you calling from? Sweden, you know, Stockholm, Sweden. Okay, great. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining the Hangout. We hope that, you know, with everything we've discussed today, lots of people will get to hear this and probably adopt a new... Uh, you don't system, think Adopt a new system of tackling Nigerian issues, especially when we have to discuss youth. Well, can I say the last thing? Okay, last thing. You know, this it's clearly, I mean, the, the program now clearly shows, I mean, how, I mean, the priority of Nigerian youth, for example, you know, this is a program, you know, that you're supposed to have a lot of people that participate, especially today, because it's focusing on the youth, you know, how, but you just have four or five people, you know, but if it's, you're calling for a party or wedding ceremony now, oh my God, you're going to see a lot of Nigerians. So it's about our priority, what we prioritize in life. Believe me, you know. I mean, we are talking about youth engagement in our democratic process at 53, and it's completely missing because, for example, who is a youth in Nigeria? We don't even have a standard definition of a youth. When you have, for example, most of the major political parties putting youth leaders probably before, above the age of 45 or 40, I mean, you sit back and ask yourself who is really a youth in Nigeria. When you go back to the UN or UNESCO definition of youth, it's someone between, let's say, 15 to 25. On the African charter level, it's up to 35 because there is quite different in terms of development, you know between Western world and Africa. So they increase the age to probably, let's say, 35. But you look, I mean, most of the people holding positions in Nigeria, politically, political office holders or public office holders, or even in private organizations, when they say this is someone that is representative of the youth, believe me, if you ask how old he is, you know, you're going to see probably he may be 40, 35, or 35, he's still under the African Charter. Most of them, I mean, are beyond the true definition of a youth, you know? So, but we're supposed to, like, there are so many um, issues, you know, that is related to our own attitude as youth, you know? And I think our generation is even doing worse than the previous gen generation that destroyed Nigeria as a, as a whole, you know, believe me. Okay, you're raising. For example, because okay. I mean, it is in this our very generation, you know, that we have kidnapping, we have terrorism, you know, people cracking bomb in their chest, blowing. I mean, the previous generation didn't do that, but of course, it's maybe part of underdevelopment, you know, that creates this social economic tension over time. But believe me, the, the things we are engaging now at this youth of now at this, I think, are even worse than. What, uh, what the previous generation has been doing, you know. Okay, I think that would be another dis <laughs> that, that would be a discussion for another day because actually that's the serious thing we're talking about. But for this one, it's a wrap. Thank you so much, everyone. Sorry, I'm a I, I wasn't able to make any meaningful content. Please do follow channel at channels beam on Twitter, and then you can continue the conversation via the hashtag Nigeria at 53 Thank you so much, guys, for joining. This is the end of this broadcast. Okay.